Hello, everyone. So we're, uh, I hope that you had a wonderful week of learning last week. So today I would uh, like to share with you information um, about child growth and development in infancy and early childhood. And um, you can see on slide one, uh, we're going to revisit Piaget's stages of cognitive development. I touched on it just briefly in uh, the first assignment. So the first year and a half to two years of life are ones of dramatic growth and change. A newborn with many involuntary reflexes and a keen sense of hearing but poor vision is transformed into a walking, talking toddler with relatively short period of, in a short period of time. Caregivers similarly transform their roles from those who manage feeding and sleep schedules to constantly moving guides and safety inspectors for mobile energetic children. Uh, brain development happens at a remarkable rate as does physical growth and language development. Infants have their own temperament and approaches to play. Interactions with primary caregivers and others undergo changes influenced by possible separation anxiety and the development of attachment styles. Social and cultural issues center around breastfeeding or formula feeding, sleeping in cribs or in beds with caregivers, toilet training, and whether to get vaccinations. Lots is going on. So early childhood is also referred to as the preschool years consisting of the years that follow toddlerhood and precede formal schooling, roughly from about age two to five or six. As a preschooler, the child is busy learning language with amazing growth and vocabulary, is gaining a sense of self and greater independence, and is beginning to learn the workings of the physical world. This knowledge does not come quickly, however, and preschoolers may initially have interesting conceptions of size, time, space, and distance, such as demonstrating how long something will take by holding out their index, two index fingers several inches apart. A toddler's fierce determination to do something may give way to a four-year-old sense of guilt for doing something that brings the disapproval of others. Easy growth and development are measured by developmental milestones. These milestones provide caregivers, general guidelines regarding what to expect at different stages. Being aware of the milestones can help them interact positively with children, but can also assist them to identify any possible concerns. This is important because early intervention can improve the outcomes for children who experience developmental delays. So as I mentioned in the last lecture, I briefly described Piaget's stages of cognitive development. Let's look at the stages again on uh, slide one. Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development suggests that children move through four different stages of mental development. His theory focused not only on understanding how children acquire knowledge, but also on understanding the nature of intelligence. So Piaget's stages are sensory motor stage, birth to two years age, pre-operational two to seven, concrete operational, seven to 11, and then formal operational stage, age 12 and up. Piaget believed that children take an active role in the learning process, acting much like little scientists as they perform experiments, make observations and learn about the world. As kids interact with the world around them, they continually add new, new knowledge, build upon existing knowledge and adapt previously held ideas to accommodate new information. Piaget proposed intelligence is something that grows and develops through a series of stages. Older children do not think more quickly than younger children, he suggested. Instead, they are both qualitative and quantitative differences between the thinking of young children versus older children. Based on his observations, he concluded that children were not less intelligent than adults. They simply think differently. Albert Einstein called Piaget's discovery so simple only a genius could have thought of it. Piaget's stage theory describes the cognitive development of children. 
Cognitive development involves changes in cognitive process and ability. In Piaget's view, early cognitive development involves processes based, based upon actions and later progresses to change in mental operations. So let's go to slide two and look more closely at uh, six, the six substages of the sensory motor stage. So cognitive development refers to the way an infant and child learns to think, remember, imagine, gather, and organize information, solve problems, and develop judgments. Yeah, it's a lot. Sounds like a lot, but it happens gradually. Cognitive milestones represent important steps forward in a child's development. Throughout human history, babies were often thought of as simple passive beings. Prior to the 20th century, children were often seen simply as miniature versions of adults. It wasn't until psychologists like Jean Piaget proposed that children actually think differently than adults do and that people began to view childhood and adolescence as a unique period of growth and development. Adults often dismiss the remarkable intellectual skills of infants and young children, but modern thinkers and researchers have discovered that babies are in fact always learning, thinking, and exploring the world around them. Even newborn infants are actively taking in information and learning new things. In addition to gathering new information about the people in the world around them, babies are also constantly discovering new things about themselves. Children grow and develop rapidly in the first five years across the four main areas of development like we've discussed. These areas are motor, physical, language and communication, cognitive, and social and emotional. Cognitive development means how children think, explore, and figure things out. It is the development of knowledge, skills, problem solving, and dispositions, which help children to think about and understand the world around them. Brain development is part of cognitive development. It is important to foster a child's cognitive development as soon as they are born, because doing so provides the foundation for success in school and later in life. For example, research shows that children who can distinguish sounds at six months of age are better at acquiring the skills for learning to read at four and five years of age. To promote a child's cognitive development, it is important to actively engage in quality interactions daily. Examples include talking and naming commonly used objects, letting the child explore toys and move about, singing and reading, expo exposing the child to books and puzzles, expanding on the child's interests in specific learning activities. For example, if a child shows an early interest in dinosaurs, you, you can take him or her on a trip to the Natural History Museum to learn more about the time that these creatures actually uh, roam the earth, answering the why questions, which can be exhausting, but they're important. So some children come to school with significantly low intellectual abilities. These children need to have a caring person uh, promoting cognitive development in the ways just mentioned. Another way that you can foster a child's cognitive development is to provide them with choices and prompt them to make thoughtful decisions. You should also allow the child to explore different ways of solving problems. While you may want to provide some gentle guidance and encouragement, allow the child some time to figure out things like a new puzzle. This may require some patience on your part, but it will ultimately help the child to learn. So let's take a look, a closer look at slide uh, three, the sensory motor stage. So, and this is from birth to two years of age, as mentioned before. So the major characteristics and developmental changes is that the infant knows the world through their movements and sensations. Uh, children learn about the world through basic actions, such as sucking, grasping, looking, and listening. Infants learn that things continue to exist, even though they cannot be seen, such as ob object permanence. They are separate beings from the people and objects around them. They realize that their actions can cause things to happen in the world around them. During this earliest stage of cognitive development, infants and toddlers acquire knowledge through sensory experience and manipulating options, objects. A child's entire experience at the earliest periods of this stage 
occur through basic reflexes, senses, and motor responses. So it is during the sens sensory motor stage that children go through a period of dramatic growth and development. As kids interact with their environment, they are continually making new discoveries about how the world works. Let's take a look, a uh, more closer look at um, slide two. So Piaget had six substages of the sensory motor stage. So substage one is simple reflexes. This is the first, the first month of life. During this period, the various reflexes that determine the infant's in interactions with their surroundings is at the center of its cognitive life. An example is the sucking reflex, causes the infant to suck. Substage two is uh, first habits and primary circular reactions. This is from one to four months. At this age, infants begin to coordinate what were separate actions into single integrated act activities. So an infant might combine grasping an object with sucking on it or staring at something with, with touching it. Uh, substage three is secondary circular reactions from four, from about four to eight months. During this period, infants take major strides in shifting their cognitive horizons beyond themselves and begin to act on the outside world. A child who repeatedly picks up a rattle in her crib and shakes it in different ways to see how the sound changes, it's demonstrating her ability to modify her cognitive scheme about shaking rattles. That's an example. So substage four is coordination of secondary circular reactions. And this is from about eight to 12 months. In this stage, infants begin to use more calculated approaches to producing events, coordinating several schemes to generate a single act. They achieve object permanence during this stage. So an example is an infant who will push one toy out of the way to reach another toy that is lying partially exposed under it. Uh, Substage five is terish, terish, I'm having a hard word, <laughs> time with this word, um, tertiary uh, circular reactions from 12 to 18 months. At this age, infants develop what Piaget regard, regards as a deliberate variation of actions that bring desirable consequences. Rather than just repeat enjoyable activities, infants appear to carry out miniature experiments to observe the consequences. So an example at this uh, tertiary stage is a child will drop a toy repeatedly, varying the position from which uh, he or she drops it, carefully observing each time to see where it falls. Substage six, beginnings of thought. From 18 months to two years, the major achievement of substage six is the capacity for mental representation or symbolic thoughts. Piaget argued that only at this stage can infants imagine where objects that they cannot see might be. Children can even plot in their heads unseen trajectories of objects so that if a ball rolls under a piece of furniture, they can figure out where it is likely to emerge on the other side. So Piaget believed that developing object permanence or object constancy, the understanding that objects continue to exist even though they cannot be seen was an important element at this point of development. By learning that objects are separate and distinct entities and that they have an existence of their own outside of individual perception, children are then able to begin to attach names and words to objects. So let's take a look at the next stage uh, of Piaget's theory which is the pre-operational stage. This is from ages two to seven. So the major characteristics and developmental changes here in this stage is that children begin to think symbolically and learn to use words and pictures to represent objects. Children at this stage tend to be egocentric and struggle to see things from the perspective of others. And while they are getting better with language and thinking, they still tend to think about things in very concrete form. The foundations of language development may have been laid during the previous stage, but it is the emergence of language that is one of the major hallmarks of the pre-operational uh, stage of development. 
Children become much more skilled at pretend play during this stage of development, yet continue to think very concretely about the world around them. At this stage, kids learn through pretend play, but still struggle with logic and taking the point of view of others. They also often struggle with understanding the idea of constancy. For example, a research researcher might take a lump of clay, divide it into two equal pieces, and then give a child the choice between two pieces of clay to play with. One piece of clay is rolled into, into a compact ball while the other is smashed into a flat pancake shape. Um, since the flat shape looks larger, the pre-operational child will likely choose that piece, even though the two pieces are the exact same size. The key features of the pre-operational stage include centration. Centration is one aspect of a situation at a time. Uh, centration is a tendency to focus on only one aspect of a situation at a time. When a child can focus on more than one aspect of a situation at the same time, they can decenter. During this stage, children have difficulties thinking about more than one aspect of any situation at the same time. They may they have they may have uh, trouble decentering in social situations just as they do in non-social contexts. Um, looking at slide three, uh, egocentrism. Egos refer to the child's ability to see a situation from another, inability to see a situation from another's point of view. The egocentric child assumes that other people see, hear, and feel the same as the child does. In the developmental theory of Jean Piaget, this is a feature of the pre-operational child. Children's thoughts and communications are typically egocentric. Play, a uh, symbolic representation um, play. At the beginning of this stage, you often find children engaging in parallel play. They often play in the same room or as other children, but they play next to others rather than with them. Each child is absorbed in its own private world and speech is egocentric. The main function of speech at this stage is to externalize the child's thinking rather than to communicate with others. Yet the child has not grasped the social function of either language or rules. Symbolic representation. I love this uh, picture of this boy with the uh, uh, banana uh, pretending that it's a phone. Uh, symbolic representation. The early pre-operational period, ages two to three, is marked by a dramatic increase in children's use of, of the symbolic function. This is the ability to make one thing, a word or an object, stand for something other than itself. Language is perhaps the most obvious form of symbolism that young children display. However, Piaget argues that language does not facilitate cognitive development, but merely reflects what the child already knows and contributes little to new knowledge. He believed cognitive development promotes language development, not vice versa. Pretend or symbolic play. Toddlers often pretend to be people they are not, example, superheroes, policemen, and may play these roles with props that symbolize real life objects. Children may also invent an imaginary playmate. In symbolic play, young children advance upon their cognitions about people, objects, and actions, and in this way construct increasingly sophisticated representations of the world. As the pre-operational stage develops, egocentricism declines and children begin to enjoy the participation of another child in their games and let's pretend uh, play becomes more important. For this to work, there is going to be a need for some way of regulating each child's relation with the other. And out of this, we need to see the beginnings of, we see the beginnings of an orientation to others in terms of rules. Animism. This is the belief that inanimate objects such as toys and teddy bears have human feelings and intentions. 
Um, by an animism, Piaget meant that for the pre-operational child, the world of nature is alive, conscious, and has a purpose. The next uh, is artificialism. This is the belief that certain aspects of the environment are manufactured by people. So example, clouds in the sky. Uh, irreversibility. Irreversibility, this is the inability to reverse the direction of a, of a sequence of events to their starting points. So uh, Piaget's theory of cognitive development helped add to our understanding of children's intellectual growth. It also stressed that children were not merely passive recipients of knowledge. Instead, kids are constantly investigating and ex experimenting as they build their understanding of how the world works. Let's go on to the next slide. So developmental concerns. So some children will take longer than others to reach developmental milestones. So Piaget's theory is pr pretty cut and dry that in certain periods, this will happen. We know that that is not the case. And certain things may cause concern if children don't reach certain developmental milestones. Caregivers should be encouraged to contact uh, a, hair, a health care uh, provider for advice. If you have concerns that a child is exhibiting any of the following traits. So unusually stiff or flo floppy body, not watching faces by two to three months, unusually quiet, unusual difficulties with feeding, does not startle to loud noises, holds hands in tight fists, does not follow activities with his or her eyes, does not seem to recognize you, uh, does not vocalize, does not seek sounds with his or her eyes, persistently unable to settle. Infants and young children have, have, have stretches. It is the developing capacity of the child from birth to six years of age to form close and secure adult and peer relationships to experience, manage, and express a full range of emotions. And if this doesn't happen, uh, we need to uh, talk with our colleagues, maybe the person that's in charge of, of your uh, child care um, facility, and, uh, and then talk to the parent. So uh, one challenge that a child may have is uh, Down syndrome. So Down syndrome is a condition in which a person has an extra chromosome. Chromosomes are small packages of genes in the body. They determine how a baby's body forms during pregnancy and how the baby's body functions as it grows in the womb and after birth. Typically, a baby is born with 46 chromosomes. Babies with Down syndrome have an extra copy of one of these chromosomes, chromosome 21. Even though people with Down syndrome might act and look similar, each person has different abilities. People with Down syndrome usually have an IQ in the middle, mildly to moderately low range, and are slower to speak than uh, other children. Some common physical features of Down syndrome include a flattened face, especially the bridge of the nose, uh, almond-shaped eyes that slant up, a short neck, small ears, a tongue that tends to stick out of the mouth, tiny white spots on their irises of the eyes, small hands and feet, a single line across the palm of the hand, small pinky fingers that sometimes cor curve toward the thumb, poor muscle tone or loose joints, and they're usually shorter in height as children and adults. Changes over the past 30 years have brought access to education for children with special needs. In more recent years, there has been slow but steady development of inclusive education for children with not only Down syndrome, but um, other challenges or stretches. With, supporter, with supportive teachers uh, for children with Down syndrome and other, other uh, stretches, children can be successful. Research indicates that appropriate educational uh, programs provide inclu with inclusive settings offer the best opportunities for children. So let's take a look at this slide. Um, and so why should a classroom be inclusive? So 
all children in an inclusive school, preschool, child care center have equal access to learning. The focus is on the child's abilities, not disabilities. Children become accepting of one another. There are meaningful relationships developed between students as they spend time with one another. Students develop confidence in their ability to interact with the world around them. Teachers are highly trained at delivering a differentiated curriculum to meet individual needs. Students have positive and appropriate supports in the classroom. Various resources and technologies are used for different learning styles, and everyone is valued and per participates to the best of their ability. So although there is considerable vari variation among individual children, um, the most common educational implications for children with Down syndrome are a strong visual awareness and visual learning skills, desire and ability to learn from peers, uh, delayed growth and fine motor skills, hearing and visual impairment is common, speech and language delay affecting comprehension and expression, poor short-term auditory memory, and short attention span. So strategies for working with children with Down syndromes and, and other uh, stretches include uh, creating an inclusive school classroom climate, just as I've described, giving the growing number of children with Down syndrome and other um, uh, stretches, it's very important that all classrooms, preschools, daycares, childcare settings be inclusive. Recent research has stressed that inclusion should be less about the physical location of the child and more about the degree to which the child is socially integrated in their educational context. So it's very important to liaise, liaise uh, closely with caregivers. Uh, many special schools operate a homeschool communication system, uh, and that's really important so that uh, everyone is communicating with each other. And, and children with Down syndrome uh, will have an individual education plan. So uh, this is a plan that helps the teacher know what the goals are, specific goals are for this child and gives them strategies. And um, it lists all the names of the team of people that are working to support the child. The IEP, the individual education plan should be reviewed on a regular basis um, and the classroom uh, teacher, um, the preschool teacher should be given every opportunity to take part in the review. Um, we need to promote language development. Often children with Down syndrome and other challenges, stretches will struggle, especially in this area. Therefore, you should uh, place the child um, close to you as much as possible, uh, speak directly to them and clearly to them and use simplified language accompanied by visual reinforcements wherever possible. Uh, reinforce positive behavior. The most common form of misbehavior among children with Down syndrome is behavior which aims at gaining attention. Uh, there may, however, also be frustration arising from their inability to cope with a level of activity or work in the classroom. So, there is uh, often a degree of social immaturity, but uh, as, as the teacher, you should reinforce the basic rules, especially at the start, uh, when they start in the, in the classroom. So as I mentioned, uh, often uh, children have challenges with their fine motor and gross motor skills. And so there's a variety of things uh, that can be done to help children. So in terms of their fine motor skills, looking at slide five. Um, so for example, in academic skills, you can help with scissor, scissor skills, pencil skills, uh, in play, uh, construction skills using Lego, puzzles, train tracks, doll dressing, and IT. Uh, Self-care, including dressing, uh, eating, and hygiene should be encouraged and gross motor skills such as sitting, standing, walking, running, jumping, lifting, and kicking should be, um, should be encouraged. So fine motor skills involve movement, 
uh, as you can see, of the smaller muscle groups in a child's hands, fingers, and wrists, whereas gross motor skills involve movement of the larger muscle groups like the arms and legs. It is these larger muscle groups that allow babies to sit up, turn over, crawl, and walk. Both types of motor skills enable children to become more independent. Fine motor skills are especially crucial, however, uh, because the ability to use the small muscles in the hands allows children to perform self-care tasks without uh, assistance. So both fine motor and uh, gross motor skills are important. Uh, so to summarize, the first six years of a child's life, particularly the first three, are the most important for healthy growth and development. Caregivers play the central role in a child's growth and development, but teachers and, uh, and staff are just as important. Uh, growth and development occurs for all children in a general developmental sequence, but within this sequence, every child will grow and develop in, in their own unique way. Developmental milestones provide a basis for monitoring early growth and development. Growth and development occur in the four primary areas as mentioned previously, physical development, emotional development, social development, and cognitive intellectual development. Play is one of the most important ways that young children develop in all four areas. Understanding early growth and development allows caregivers to understand the behavior of children and interact with them in productive, healthy, and meaningful ways. Happy learning this week, everyone.